FM radio will be shut off within a few years in many European countries and DAB is sold as the digital, thus better, alternative. Well, DAB Plus does have some practical advantages, but what about the sound quality? Why do we need to lose FM radio? For the same reason we lost analog TV. Inefficient use of radio frequencies. The situation in Europe is different from those on other continents. At least in northwestern Europe you can receive FM radio along almost all highways. Only in mountainous areas reception might be less or impossible. That has a lot to do with the population density and welfare. But the needs of the big ICT companies like Microsoft, Google, Cisco, Amazon and many others for more wireless internet has put pressure on analog TV and FM radio. Both use very popular parts of the frequency band that offer relatively long reach, low interference by buildings and so on. That is why they were chosen back in the day for TV and FM. Since wireless internet has more future than radio and TV and since those frequencies potentially can be leased to internet companies at higher prices, FM radio and TV has to make place for wireless internet. Partly that's no problem for when you don't set your standards too high you can squeeze many TV stations in the same space an analog channel did occupy. Furthermore, TV is generally watched at home and there alternatives like cable and satellite are often easily installed. For FM radio something similar is taking place. If you have a, have a cable or satellite subscription, the receiver also offers digital radio. You further have the alternative of internet radio. Mobile use of internet radio is still a costly affair since it will eat up your data plan quite easily, so there still is a need for aerial reception of radio stations. In the 80s and 90s many initiatives for digital radio were undertaken. In the States satellite radio and HD radio were introduced where here in Europe the Norwegian Broadcast Corporation NRK was the first and used a protocol called Digital Audio Broadcasting or DAB for short. The UK and Sweden followed suit. The protocol used MPEG2 audio at 128 kilobit per second and a sampling frequency of 32 kilohertz. It is a variant of the MPEG-2 layer 3 codec that we know as MP MP3 but then at a lower sampling rate which effectively reduced the audio bandwidth to 14 kHz from the 15 kHz for FM radio. In most European countries DAB never got widely accepted. That led about a quarter of a century later to the initiation of DAB Plus which is not forward compatible with DAB. Although broadcasters have the option to combine DAB and DAB Plus channels inside the same transmission channel and DAB Plus receivers are backward compatible. DAB Plus is supposed to replace FM radio in the coming 5 to 10 years at least in most European countries and can also be found in Australia, Brunei Dar es Salaam, Canada, China, Ghana, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, New Zealand, the Russian Federation, Singapore, South Africa, South Korea, Taiwan and Vietnam. DAB had a kind of MP3 at 128 kilobits per second quality that was considered to be satisfactory. In the meantime MP3 like technologies are rather outdated and are followed up by for instance AAC which is the MPEG-4 version and stands for Advanced Audio Codec, not for Apple Audio Codec as some say. AAC offers about the same quality as MP3 at only half the bitrate. For DAB Plus even higher compression is used so to carry as many radio stations in one channel and to assure good reception when on the move. In June 2003 the European Broadcasting Union, EBU for short, 
performed a subjective listening test on low bitrate audio codecs, the results of which are published on the TEC 3296. More or less as a result the World DAB organization that is in charge of DAB standards chose the HEAAC V2 audio codec for DAB+. The same codec is used for XM satellite radio and HD radio both in the US and Digi Digital Radio Mondial that uses VHF and finds its roots in France. DAB Plus uses a bitrate of 64 kilobits per second, although there also seems to be a 48 kilohertz version using a slightly different codec. The scary bit is that the EBU listening test used 120 kilobit per second MPEG-2 as a reference and considered the chosen codec to be about the same quality. Where I would consider the old DAB standard as acceptable for portable use, I find the current DAB Plus standard to sound poor. As a reference I must tell you that I also hate FM radio stations that use broadcast processors to make their own sound. These broadcast processors precede the transmitter and are essentially multi-band compressors. The audio band is split up in generally four bands, like a crossover filter in a speaker splits up the audio in high, mid and low. Then each band is compressed separately with potentially other settings per band. Then the four bands are added up again to form a highly compressed and limited signal. This causes peculiar sounds and especially pop and rock stations think they can make this station sound better than other stations. On stations with an older public the setting will be a lot milder but still is audible and for me not agreeable. Classical music stations usually use little or no broadcast processing. But I don't like to listen to classical music while on the move and at home I rather play music at real CD quality or better. If I want to listen to a radio program on the move I normally check whether it's available as a podcast and listen to that. Not only can I listen to it at my own convenience, but usually podcasts are recorded from the original signal and did not pass the broadcast processor. Especially when the bitrate is 256 kilobits per second in MP3 or even better AAC, the quality will be better than that coming from the FM transmitter since often the connection between the studio and the transmitter is a 256 kilobit MP3 like signal. If you are at home or have an unlimited data bundle on your phone, you can also check whether there is an internet radio stream of your favorite station. Often there are more than one. If AAC is an option that usually is the best and AAC 256 is close enough to real CD quality for radio. Then what about DAB Plus quality? Let's split this up in the codec quality and the compressed quality. The codec quality, so the audio quality when no or little broadcast compression is used, is already very low. So low that I'm not keen on listening to it. When then broadcast processing is applied, it's of even lower quality. In general, not the same broadcast processor, or at least not the same settings, is used for FM since that would confuse the codec. It won't bother people using a ghetto blaster, but I find it tiring even on programs with spoken word only. I can't think of anyone in my pack of the woods that would buy a DAB Plus receiver. Whether integrated in a stereo set, as a standalone radio, a car stereo or a portable receiver. In-house reception still is not covered everywhere and the coverage of FM radio is good enough for most while the audio quality is clearly better. Remember it's not the consumer benefit that drives this move, but the opportunities for governments to cash in on frequency auctions since ICT companies have far higher budgets than radio stations. Therefore, a lot of effort is put into convincing the consumer that the digital quality of DAB Plus is superior to FM radio. 
And of course the convenience factor plays a role too. Although many car stereos offer presets and automatic switching between transmitters for FM. So the question is what will prevail? The hype or the audio quality? And the stakes are high, so a lot of marketing power will be used. If we wouldn't massively switch to DAB+, there will be no way the government can switch off FM without the risk of a revolt. But history has learned us that marketing power often wins. And don't be fooled by the TV transition. Digital terrestrial TV, DVB-T in Europe, is only a small part of all TV watches here. The bulk watches TV over cable or satellite and there now also is IPTV, TV over glass fiber. And perhaps that's the way radio will go too. Cable or internet radio for home and DAB plus or podcast for on the move. This is the point in the video where I usually come to a nice segue to invite you to subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google Plus. For there's much more to tell about DAB Plus and it will be very interesting. But where DAB Plus is concerned it is difficult to think of future developments that will get me enthusiastic. Still questions are welcomed, please post them below this video. But don't ask me for buying advice. View my About Questions video to find out why. I have posted more information below this video. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.